Greetings, fellow mathematicians. We're going to take a look at a simple and straightforward first order linear differential equation that will solve using an integrating factor. Now, before you go through this problem, check out the video I have linked down below in the description where we'll go through all the steps in detail. We're going to start solving this one by noticing the differential equation is already in linear form. First, y and its derivative are raised to first powers. Second, in front of the derivative term, there's only a coefficient of one, and on the right side, there's no y terms. So this is in linear form, and we can go ahead and find the integrating factor, but first, we need to identify p of x. And p of x, that's the quantity multiplying y in the differential equation. So if we take a look, what's multiplying y here is 2x, and that is p of x for this differential equation. Now for the integrating factor, we calculate the integral or antiderivative of p of x. So take p of x and integrate it. And that's actually a really simple antiderivative. It comes out to just x squared. And again, we mentioned in the video linked down below in the description that we don't need the plus c there in the formula for the integrating factor. So we can write down our integrating factor mu here as e raised to the x squared. All right, next we're going to go to our differential equation and multiply the whole equation, the left and right side, by the integrating factor e to the x squared. So we'll get e to the x squared times the derivative plus now 2x times e to the x squared times y. And it's worth pointing this out. Don't forget to multiply the right side by the integrating factor as well. I've seen a lot of differential equation students forget that. So multiply the right side by the integrating factor you'll get x times e to the x squared. And now we're ready for the key step. The whole reason we use an integrating factor is the left side always combines or collapses to the derivative with respect to x of mu, the integrating factor, times y. And that always happens. So this left side that becomes the derivative with respect to x of the integrating factor mu e to the x squared times y. Let's go ahead and write down the differential equation. That's just the left side. So we have the left side as the derivative with respect to x of e to the x squared times y. And that equals x times e to the x squared. And now we're ready for the main idea of differential equations. We're going to cancel derivatives by integrating. So we're going to integrate both sides with respect to x, integrating a derivative that should cancel, leaving you with e to the x squared times y, and we integrate the right side with respect to x. And this is where most of the work occurs because now you're calculating an integral and that can be simple or very complicated. Hopefully your differential equations course stresses the following core and fundamental integration methods, substitution, integration by parts, and partial fraction decomposition. But you might find other antiderivatives and integration methods popping up here. This integral, we can evaluate it with a basic substitution. And it looks like we can choose u as x squared. We're going to calculate the differential du 
which comes out to 2x dx. Our integral contains a factor of x as well as dx, but we're missing a factor of 2. So divide that over to the u side and write that as 1 half du equals x dx. And now we can convert our integral from x to a simpler integral in terms of u. So x dx, that's going to become 1 half. The differential is now du. And e to the x squared, that becomes e to the u. And at that point, we have a very straightforward antiderivative for the exponential function, just e to the u. The 1 half is just a constant multiple. And at this point, because we're integrating that right side, we do need the plus c, the integration constant here. You don't need it in the integrating factor, but you do need it when you integrate the right side. All right, so we're going to write the antiderivative here. We back substitute u as x squared. And that is the integral of the right-hand side. So let's go ahead and write that down. The left side, we're going to keep it as e to the x squared times y. We just integrated the right side as 1 half e to the x squared plus c. And at that point, we're basically done. We have an implicit solution to the differential equation. Make sure you're aware that your differential equations course might ask you to go further and get an explicit solution. And that's actually one of the benefits of solving linear differential equations. These are very easy to solve for y. Just go ahead and divide by the integrating factor. So if we divide here by e to the x squared, we'll be able to solve for y. And it looks like what we get is y by itself on the left side. The e to the x squareds cancel out there. You're left with a half. And you have your constant, which is why it's important to include the plus c. The constant's divided by e to the x squared. But I'm going to write 1 over e to the x squared as e raised to the negative x squared. That just makes the solution look a little cleaner, in my opinion. So here, we'll rewrite that as plus c times e to the negative x squared. And that is the explicit solution. All right, the last thing that we're going to do is notice the differential equation gives us an initial condition that's going to allow us to solve for c here. So if we write it down, y of 0 equals negative 3, the notation here is telling you y as a function of x. So your x value, the input, is 0. But the output, the y, is negative 3. So if you go ahead and plug in those two values, y is becoming negative 3. We have a half, and we are plugging in x as 0. You'll get e to the 0, which is 1. So you're just left with plus c there. And this is pretty straightforward. Just go ahead and subtract a half. And it looks like you should get c as negative 7 halves. And we can just plug that in. And we get our explicit solution. We get it as y equals 1 half, but now minus 7 over 2 times e to the negative x squared. And there we go. Now, this is, again, a very simple first order linear differential equation, but it contains all of the fundamental steps, how you identify p of x, how you calculate the integrating factor, how you use the integrating factor. And that was here, collapsing the left side by reversing the product rule, and then integrating both sides. Hope you enjoyed the problem. Straight to the point, 
If you're enjoying the content, support the channel, like, and subscribe.